I'm Trish. I'm a staff data scientist at Shopify on a team that builds analytic data products for our merchants so that they can understand how their stores are performing. Uh, in my six years working on this team, we've been pretty prolific and we own a massive portfolio of data pipelines powering all sorts of things. A lot of the work that I do is in helping my team uh, optimize for this and specifically as opposed to this. What I mean by this is I want to help my team deliver more value over time by finding the right balance of building new products and preserving the value of our existing ones. Maintaining all this can be pretty overwhelming though. Uh, look at what can go wrong. Breakages, delays, scaling issues, bug reports, support inquiries, required migrations, and everyone's favorite tech debt. Uh, all of these things are going on all the time with different levels of urgency and with different consequences if they aren't addressed. Um, but this is a talk about data goalies. Let's get into what that means. Data goalie is a rotational position that my team has, and we give a fixed percentage of our team's total bandwidth to it. The name data goalie comes from the idea that goalies keep pucks out of the net. I think of this as happening in a couple ways. One is by taking the hit on anything disruptive. We're talking who triages critical pipeline failures, who answers questions from support, who jumps on that emergency that really needs someone to do something today. Goalies also try to fix problems in the moment, if it's reasonable, so that they don't grow into bigger problems and so that fewer issues overflow onto the next goalie or the rest of the team. Oops. Yeah. What's really nice about this, since we have a good chunk of bandwidth devoted to goalie work, we've got a nice buffer zone in which to absorb most disruptive things that can happen without needing to pull in people who are expecting to be able to focus on normal projects this week. The second piece of the goalie program is that any goalie time that isn't taken up with this reactive disruption work, we spend on maintenance. At the start of every goalie shift, we line up a backlog of the most valuable tasks in the maintenance space that we would love for goalies to work on this shift, while acknowledging that it's possible disruptions will happen and we may not get to actually do them. So to recap, two big selling points. Predictability for other projects, because non-goalies generally should be able to expect they won't be disrupted. Uh, and secondly, the ability to actually prioritize maintenance work a little better, since it isn't being pitted against project work. This is really key because a product deadline is always going to sound more compelling than a maintenance one, but we do need to carve out space for maintenance too, or we're going to live in a world that's always on fire. To help you picture it, here are a few details about how my team's goalie program is set up. Out of about 16 people total, we have the equivalent of about three people on goalie duty in terms of bandwidth at any given time, and we manage it like a project. Once a week, the incoming and outgoing goalies meet for a meeting called OSHA Tech Debt to recap the previous shift and set priorities for the new shift. So let's look at how it's going. It's worth noting that our team does have a long history of goalie programs, uh, but at the same time, we've revamped things in the last few months. So, and, and a lot of the details we saw on the previous slide are speaking to the most recent iteration, what we've uh, recently improved. So here's how it's going so far. We have had a few big disruptions happen, and we've seen that the goalie program contained them like a champ with negligible overflow to the rest of the team, which is really great to see. Um, when new work comes up, it doesn't feel overwhelming in the way it sometimes can because we have a pretty well-trodden path for resolving tech debt or, or bugs or whatever it is. Uh, we create an issue, we document it, we put it in the priority list, and then we plan and we see which shift it will fit into. Um, we see a lot of collaboration. Having two random goalies and a manager every shift, we see a lot of collaboration between people who haven't necessarily worked together before. Uh, our team has three sub-teams in it, and this has been a nice kind of way to slowly de-silo them. Uh, we also see ICs having a lot of growth, which I always love to see, uh, partly in terms of ex getting exposed to, exposure to new things, but also in terms of being becoming more comfortable with uh, the discomfort of being dropped into code that's written by someone else. Finally, future work. You always need future work. Uh, so I think one area for obvious improvement is that we're not on autopilot here. We still require someone in a central coordination role and figuring out how to make it more self-organizing is work that is still in our future. All right. Thanks for listening. Happy NormConf.